In this video presentation, we will discuss about the avian influenza, popularly known as bird flu. One of the most detrimental avian viral disease, which is zoonotic, and with the potential of creating a global pandemic. Only the highly pathogenic avian influenza and the very virulent Newcastle disease are listed as a notifiable disease among the poultry diseases. In this lecture, we will discuss on avian influenza. Classification Arthomyxoviridae family, classified under the Baltimore Group 5. These are the genus under this family. Influenza virus type A, type B, type C, and Thogatovirus. Only influenza virus type A is known to infect animals, and it is zoonotic. That is, it can infect animals, and also humans. Under the genus type A influenza virus, there are avian influenza, swine influenza, equine influenza, and human influenza. Type B and type C influenza virus mostly infect humans and typically cause mild disease. Unlike the other genus, which are transmitted by droplet, the Thogatovirus or Arbovirus, that is arthropod borne virus, transmitted by ticks. Avian influenza. The other names for this viral infection are foul plague, avian flu, and bird flu. Avian influenza is caused by the genus type A influenza virus of the family Orthomyxoviridae. This highly contagious virus affects the food producing birds like chicken, turkey, quail, guinea fowl, as well as pet birds and wild birds. This infection is characterized as mild disease with low or no mortality, or it can be highly fatal, rapidly spreading, caused by highly pathogenic avian influenza. The severity depends on the virus strain, whether it is low pathogenic or highly pathogenic strain infecting host factors and environment factors. Aquatic wild birds act as natural reservoir for this virus. So these birds, waterfowls, ducks, gulls, seabirds, geese, swans, shorebirds, and terns can carry the virus without any signs of illness. This virus can be transmitted from infected poultry to the humans and causes infection in poultry handlers. So this virus is having a public health concern with zoonotic potential. Depending upon the strain, and other factors, in human, this virus can cause mild symptoms like conjunctivitis or mild respiratory disease. Or it can cause severe illness. The symptoms begin within 2 to 8 days, which seems like common flu affecting humans. Symptoms like, cough, fever, sore throat, muscle aches, headache, and shortness of breath are observed. Virus morphology. The virus is highly pleomorphic. This virus possesses helical capsid, which encases segmented genome, and also covered with lipid envelope all around. This segmentation may lead to genetic reassortment. The entire virus is about 80 to 120 nanometer diameter. This lipid envelope is studded with two important proteins namely, the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. These two proteins are the immunodominant proteins, which play a major role in the antigenicity, that is virus neutralizing antigens. For this infection, antiviral drugs are available against neuraminidase and M2 matrix protein ion channel. Picture shown here is the electron microscope image of an influenza virus. Antigenic property. On contrast with the family paramyxoviridae viruses, the influenza virus does not possess fusion protein. It possesses only hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. Genomic organization. The genome is multipartite, that is segmented, single-stranded, and negative sense RNA. This segmented genome may result in genetic reassortment. The influenza type A virus possess eight segments. Type B virus possess eight segments. Type C virus, seven segments. And Thogata virus, six segments. So, our interest is on influenza type A virus, which possess eight segments. These eight segments codes for 11 proteins, that is each segment codes for one or two proteins. Segment four and segment six which codes the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase respectively. As we already discussed, these two proteins play a major role as neutralizing antigenic determinants. Within hemagglutinin, there are 16 subtypes, named as H1 to H16. Similarly, within neuraminidase, there are 9 subtypes, named as N1 to N9. In addition to the existing subtypes, two more new subtypes have been proposed, in both the proteins. It has been identified only in bats. The influenza viruses infecting avian species possess the hemagglutinin subtypes, either H5, H7, or H9, along with the any one of the nine neuraminidase subtypes. For example, 
H5N1 virus. This influenza virus, possess hemagglutinin in 5, and neuraminidase 1 subtype. Next example, H7N9 influenza virus. This virus, possess hemagglutinin in 7, and neuraminidase 9 subtype. And H9N2 influenza virus, possess hemagglutinin in 9, and neuraminidase 2 subtype. Avian influenza strains, can be broadly classified into, highly pathogenic, and low pathogenic avian influenza strains. Highly pathogenic strains may possess H5, or H7. Low pathogenic avian influenza strains may be H5, or H7, or H9. Highly pathogenic strains causes severe clinical signs. Affects multiple internal organs. High mortality, reaches up to 90 to 100%. Death is seen within 48 hours. But ducks and aquatic wild bird does not exhibit signs. Low pathogenic strains causes, few or no clinical signs which may be mostly undetected due to lack of symptoms. Some of important avian influenza strains, recorded previously, like H5N1, Hong Kong outbreak in 1997, 2003 and 2004, H7N9, China outbreak in 2013, and other strains like, H7N2, H7N3, H7N7, and H9N2 also been recorded. As we already discussed, the segmented genome may result in genetic reassortment. That may lead to evolution of new virus. In this scenario, if a pig is infected with two different virus species, that is avian influenza, and human influenza virus at same time, this pig act as mixing vessel for these viruses, may result in genetic reassortment. If a single cell is infected with two different viruses at same time, due to reassortment of segments, that is genetic recombination, there may be evolution of new virus, that may be a hybrid of this two virus. For example, Human influenza virus, with avian influenza glycoprotein spikes. This type of major change in the virus is called as antigenic shift. This happens due to reassortment of segments, that is genetic recombination, leads to evolution of new virus. This newly evolved virus, can infect the human population, from pigs, which may be highly detrimental in severity, spread, and treatment. In next scenario, genetic reassortment can also happen in human. If a human is infected with two different virus species, that is avian influenza, and human influenza virus at same time. So in a single cell infected with two different virus, due to reassortment of segments, that is genetic recombination, there may be evolution of new virus, that may be a hybrid of this two virus. So this person can act as source for this newly evolved virus, and can transmit to other human population. Some of the influenza viruses have created pandemic in this world. These are the influenza pandemics listed as per the timeline. In 1918, 1920, Spanish flu, caused by H1N1 virus, in which 50 to 100 million human death were reported. In 1957, 1958, Asian flu, caused by H2N2 virus, in which 1 to 4 million human death were reported. In 1968, 1969, Hong Kong flu, caused by H3N2 virus, in which 1 to 4 million human death were reported. In 2009, 2010, H1N1 flu pandemic, in which 1.5 to 5.7 lakh human death were reported. 2009 H1N1 flu. A pandemic influenza virus, which is a new virus, evolved as a hybrid of swine, avian, and human influenza strain, due to genetic reassortment in pigs and humans. As we already discussed, avian influenza viruses are pathotyped, based on their virulence, into two pathotypes, or strains highly pathogenic, and low pathogenic. How they are pathotyped? Generally, they are pathotyped, using any one of the following laboratory methods. Number 1. Mean death time. Here the virus is injected into 10-day-old specific pathogen-free embryonated eggs, and their mean death time is analyzed. Number 2. Intracerebral pathogenicity index. Most commonly used method. Here the virus is injected into a day-old specific pathogen-free chick, and then their pathogenicity index is analyzed. And number 3. Intravenous pathogenicity index. Here the virus is injected into 6 weeks old specific pathogen free chickens, and then their pathogenicity index is analyzed. Intravenous pathogenicity index. Most commonly used method for this virus. Here the virus is injected intravenously into a 6 weeks old specific pathogen free chicken. Each virus has two injected to a flock of each with 10 SPF chickens. After injection, Birds are examined every 24 hours for 10 days. Then, the birds are scored. Scores 0, if the bird is normal. 
1, if sick, and 2, if dead. The pathogenic index, more than 1.2, is considered as, highly pathogenic strain. This virus possess hemagglutinin and glycoprotein spikes, which attaches to the specific RBCs, that is chicken or turkey RBCs. In turn, a network of bridges is formed between the RBCs and the viruses. This is called, hemagglutination. Following agglutination with RBCs, the virus detaches with the RBCs later, due to the neuraminidase enzymes, which is present in the same viruses, by breaking the brides formed between the cells and the viruses. This is called, elution. In influenza virus, this hemagglutinin and glycoprotein are generally exist as an inactive precursor. But once this inactive protein is reacted to the proteolytic enzymes like cellular protease, which is present in the epithelial cell lining of respiratory and intestinal tract, the inactive hemagglutinin precursor, get cleaved or fragmented into, active subunits. In this process, the virus becomes infectious, and susceptible to the host. Virus Replication The influenza virus enters the host by endocytosis. Following entry, genomes get released by endosomal acidification. This virus replicates in the nucleus. Here, each genome segment is negative sense RNA. So, they cannot translate, or be infectious on its own. So first they must transcribe, to the positive sense RNA, by an unusual phenomenon in the orthomix of virus, called as, cap snatching phenomenon. Then, this transcribed positive sense RNA, which are similar to mRNA, can be translated to viral proteins. On the other side, the negative sense viral RNA are transcribed for complementary strand, for the transcription of negative sense viral RNA. Later, this transcribed negative sense viral RNA, and the translated viral proteins, self-assembles to form virion. Following assembly, virion release through budding from the host membrane. In the process of budding from the host membrane, the virion acquires their lipid envelope around. Cap snatching phenomenon. The primary transcription involves an unusual phenomenon known as cap snatching. Here the virus, snatches the 5' methyl cap, from the cellular mRNA by cleaving the 5' cap from the host mRNA by endonuclease activity. This snatched or cleaved 5' cap will be used, by the virus, as primer, for transcription of viral mRNA, that is mRNA synthesis. This synthesized mRNA will in turn, translate for the viral proteins. This type of unusual transcription, seen orthomics of virus, is called as, cap snatching phenomenon. Transmission. The discharges, secretions and the excretions from the infected poultry, act as the principal source of this virus. This virus is having the portal of entry, through inhalation. The incubation is on an average of 3 to 7 days from the entry of virus. Incubation depends on the virus strain, bird species infected, and other host factors. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through inhalation, the virus does its initial replication in the epithelium of the respiratory tract, and intestinal tract. Followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the visceral and lymphoid organs. Following secondary replication, the virus get distributed through the secondary viremia, with subsequent viral shedding through discharges, secretions and excretions. Clinical manifestations. Based on the severity of infection. Bird may be with mild form, such as no clinical signs or mild effects on respiratory system, ruffled feathers, and drop in egg production. Or it may be a severe form, with severe depression, inappetence, drastic decline in egg production, facial edema, swollen and cyanotic combs, wattles, hemorrhages on internal membrane, and end up with sudden death in flocks. Postmortem findings and gross lesions. The lesions are not pathognomonic. Often misdiagnosed. Findings like, swelling and edema of head and neck region, petite cal hemorrhage on the mucosa of proventriculus, ulceration or necrosis of respiratory or digestive lymphoid tissue, and ulceration or necrosis of pyres batches are observed. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the history. Clinical symptoms. As we already discussed, signs and symptoms are often misdiagnosed for other poultry diseases. And post-mortem findings. As we discussed earlier, these lesions are not pathognomonic. Only identified by isolation, followed by laboratory test. Next. Laboratory diagnosis. For a lab diagnosis. Oropharyngeal swab cloacal swab, serum are collected from live bird. In dead bird, spleen, lung, kidney, intestine, heart, brain, and liver are collected. Generally, samples are pooled, 
and processed together for diagnosis. The picture shown here is the collection of sample from the live bird using oropharyngeal swab. The sample has to be sent for diagnosis at HSADL, ICAR, IVRI, High Security Animal Disease Laboratory, at Bhopal. This virus can be cultivated or isolated in lab by embryonated egg inoculation, 9 to 11 days old specific pathogen free, or specific antibody negative embryonated chicken eggs are used. For this allantoic route of inoculation method is done. Following inoculation and incubation, allantoic fluids are collected, and confirmed for the presence of influenza virus can be done by hemagglutination test, hemagglutination inhibition test, agar gel precipitation test, and by reverse transcriptase PCR. These are some of the laboratory tests can be done for diagnosis of this virus. For antigen detection, hemagglutination test, hemagglutination inhibition test using influenza virus specific antiserum, agar gel precipitation test. Reverse transcriptase PCR and DNA sequencing can be done. For antibody detection, hemagglutination inhibition test using known specific influenza virus, and agar gel precipitation test can be done. For identification of this virus, the illustrated OIE prescribed methodology is followed. First the pooled processed samples has to be isolated for the virus in the specific pathogen-free or specific antibody negative embryonated chicken egg. Following isolation, the allantoic fluids are tested for the virus by hemagglutination, hemagglutination inhibition using specific antiserum, agar gel precipitation test, and further confirmation by reverse transcriptase PCR and DNA sequencing is done. Prevention and control. Prophylactic measures. In this, following measures is to be established to prevent all types of viral and communicable diseases in the poultry farming, like bird proofing houses, proper feed and water supply. Proper carcass disposal. Pest control like, insects and mice control in flocks. Avoidance of contact with birds of unknown health status, that is from newly acquired domesticated poultry, pet birds and wild or feral birds. Control of human traffic, like employees should not have contact with outside birds. Control of vehicle traffic. Strict disinfection of equipment. All in all outbreeding, that is one age group per farm, is recommended. And disinfection between groups. During outbreak situations, measures like destruction of all infected and exposed birds, and proper carcass disposal, with a gap of 21 days before restocking. Effective quarantines and movement controls should be followed. Vaccination using an activated vaccine with the epizootic strain. And thorough cleaning and disinfection of the premises are followed. Vaccination. By using an activated influenza vaccine is done. These vaccines are cultivated in the specific pathogen-free embryonated eggs, and then the infected allantoic fluid were inactivated by beta-propiolactone, or by formalin. This inactivated vaccine is emulsified with mineral oil. In influenza virus, due to variation of different strains within subtype, there is a problem in selecting the strains to produce inactivated vaccines. Some vaccination strategies like, use of autogenous strains, that is the vaccines are prepared from the isolates specifically involved in an epizootic. These are some of the vaccine subtypes or strains used over in different outbreak situation. There are also lab recombinant vaccines available for avian influenza and used in a few countries since 1997, mostly in chickens. In which, fowl pox virus, or Newcastle disease virus, or turkey herpes viral genome is ligated with the influenza A virus hemagglutinin 5 subtype gene, and expressed. Culling. Killing the potentially infected birds is done, in order to reduce the threat of avian influenza transmission. FAO has recommended, a zoning strategy, to control influenza. In this, first, the infected area is identified, where sick or dead birds have tested positive. All poultry, in this infected area zone, are culled. Culling is not recommended, beyond the infected area, unless there is evidence of spread. The area 5 km from the outer boundary of infected area is considered, as restricted area. This restricted area is placed under, strict surveillance. 10 km from the restricted area is the, control area. This control area serves as a buffer zone, in case of spread. Next we will see, how control strategy was carried out between 2004 and 2005 to contain H5N1 outbreak. In this, first, the infected area was identified where sick or dead birds have tested positive. All the poultry, in a 3 km radius beyond the infected point, was culled. Then, all the poultry, in a 5 km radius beyond the culled point, was vaccinated. Between 2004 and 2005, 
Over 100 million chickens were culled in Asia to contain H5N1 influenza virus. The picture shown here is the interior of a poultry shelter, showing the infected birds that have been mass killed, by suffocation, with foam. The disease can carry a high mortality in humans. Antiviral drugs are available against this virus, by targeting the, neuraminidase protein, and the M2 ion channel proteins. So antiviral drugs, if taken within two days of symptoms, may help. Drugs like, aceltamivir, zanamivir are used as the, neuraminidase inhibitors. And amantadine, romantadine are used as the, M2 ion channel blocker. With this we are coming to the end of avian influenza. In next video presentation we will discuss on the swine and equine influenza in detail. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.